Welcome to the Dairy Foods Delivery Clean Invoicing Evaluation. My name is Georgia Brown, and I will be your moderator for today. And our subject matter expert is Daryl Wilson. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining. So who is Extendia? Five-point delivery evaluation, review of cost centers and savings potential, since the opportunities, and question and answers. And who is Extendia? Since 2002, over 1,500 companies have depend on Extend Data for their mobility and supply chain solutions. We have five areas of expertise, mobile computing, professional services, software development, wireless integration, and identification and tracking solutions. Within Dairy Foods, we have uh, pulled these three customers forward for you to show that they are a representative of those who have implemented our solution and really have followed the recommendations that we'll be providing to you today in this webinar. And when Extendata is working in the dairy foods industry, our expertise is, our expertise is around delivery, improving delivery operations, creating manpower efficiency, decreasing delivery and administrative costs, and generating improved visibility. So without any further ado, let me have Daryl dive right into that five-point evaluation. Thanks, Georgia. So we're going to talk about five specific uh, points around uh, evaluating your delivery operations uh, for the dairy food service industry. Obviously, there are additional uh, points that we could have potentially brought up, but wanted to keep it uh, close and tight so that uh, we can keep this webinar short for you guys. One of the first... Uh, topics of our evaluation here uh, is around paper invoices. Uh, and typically, if you are not using an electronic proof of delivery system, you're um, utilizing a you know, printed paper um, a delivery ticket or invoice, um, or potentially drivers are handwriting these uh, when they make their deliveries. So the question is, do your drivers uh, utilize a paper-based invoice for completing a customer delivery? If the answer is yes to that, and here are a couple of the scenarios that uh, create some challenges around a paper invoice. Uh, the first, hard to read handwriting. That's probably the most obvious. Uh, you know, drivers sometimes don't always uh, write their numbers or uh, notes very clear, so it uh, can be a challenge to kind of confirm or understand what uh, quantities they would have uh, written down. Um, that can then lead to potential for a product quantity miscounts. So, you know, product that you intend to deliver, uh, the, those counts may end up being a little different than what got recorded, um, either over or under, uh, which can create some challenges there. And then just the lack of back office visibility. Because things are being recorded on paper, um, you don't have any visibility really to what's going on unless one, your driver makes a phone call into the back office, um, or uh, you know, at the end of the day when all that paperwork uh, comes back in. So I want to point out one thing real quick on this slide. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a red box uh, that talks about some resulting cost areas related to that specific topic. So for this one, uh, driver paperwork and overall paper supplies are areas where costs um, kind of apply. As I go through the additional points, you'll continue to see that uh, box down there so you can kind of get an idea. Those will be meaningful toward the end when uh, George is talking about some of the return on investment uh, information. So our next topic deals with invoice adjustment errors. Uh, really, this ties into the scenarios of here's what's supposed to be delivered. An adjustment occurs because a customer doesn't need the product, there's damage, there's um, other challenges with the product, so the counts are different than what uh, is intended to be delivered, and then the question is why, and w what was actually happening, and is that data captured accurately. Uh, in the event that uh, that happens with any sort of regularity, uh, here are some of the challenges that apply there. Uh, misdelivered product, again, one of the more obvious, um, if the counts aren't captured correctly um, and product is either pulled from the shelf or additional product stays on the shelf, um, 
the quantities that are delivered may not match what's on the uh, the final ticket. That then can, uh, you know, depending upon how quickly that's discovered or caught, um, the driver may end up returning to the customer to either pick up product or uh, deliver additional product. And of course, that's going to take time out of the process. Um, that could then impact the your delivery schedule for the rest of your stops on that route. So, multiple conversations to understand the invoices. Um, again, if there are adjustments being made and we're dealing with poor handwriting from a driver and those tickets have come into the back office and that the person has got to touch base with the route manager, route manager calls the driver, on and on and on. Um, a lot of different people can get involved, which then just, you know, thoroughly delays the process um, and sometimes, you know, creates more confusion. And there's the back office data entry piece. Again, if there are adjustments um, and those are inaccurate, that can lead to, uh, you know, additional credits or invoices being created or applied that uh, may not be accurate. Um, that takes time and then obviously if that's inaccurate, you're creating frustration for and potential confusion for your customers. Our next topic deals with the issue of manual data entry. Again, if you're dealing with paper, those that information is going to come back and somebody's got to key that back into the back office systems. That could be an ERP system, accounting system, uh, warehouse management system, if you've got to adjust any sort of inventory levels. So if your back office staff is manually keying that type of information. Some of the challenge as it relates to that, um, you know, data entry delayed until the paperwork's physically available. Again, we talked about, you know, paperwork doesn't come back till the end of the day, potentially the next morning. Um, and in some cases, if you have some remote drivers, um, they may have to FedEx or, you know, mail that uh, paperwork back in and that, that just creates a longer delay in that process. Uh, manual data entry into any systems generally always time consuming. Uh, obviously that can, the folks who do it on a day in day out basis, they'll get uh, faster at it, but the faster they get sometimes that uh, has a, the tendency to create some additional errors in the process. If any of the data is incorrect from the drivers, uh, obviously that is always going to complicate the, any manual data entry process into those systems. Uh, data errors due to manual entry. Again, this is really the idea of you know fat fingering uh, values because um, somebody's just trying to crank through it, things like that. Um, and then multiple corrections. Again, in the case of you know adjustments and bad handwriting, trying to you know confirm what's happening. Um, if uh, anything has got to get corrected, that can create uh, some challenges as well as takes additional time. And then the issue of inaccurate or delayed and or delayed reporting. You know, again, because there's a delay in the paperwork coming in, there's a delay in getting the data into the system. You know, it could be days or a week or more before you can run specific reports to understand how deliveries for a customer are going or deliveries for, uh, you know, the performance of a specific route, something like that. So our next issue revolves around end-of-day settlement, and really this you know ties into you know what's that driver got to do at the end of his day to kind of settle the route. He's generally got to deal with um, you know reconciling some payments uh, picked up from customers, uh, potentially looking at the inventory, making sure he's got what he's expected to, and again with a paper-based system, um, you may not have any really good tools or mechanisms to to accomplish that. If that's a paper-based or a non-existent process for you, here's some of the challenges that apply there. Uh, any sort of handwritten accounting is error prone. So we know that uh, if a driver's got to get out his calculator and you know calculate out the uh, cash or checks that he may have received for any sort of payments, you know, again, depending upon the types of customers that you have, uh, there's always a chance for him to mess that up in the calculation or in writing it down. Uh, same would apply for any sort of inventory count. Um, because these are a challenge, uh, the possibility of theft goes up. Um, so because you're dealing with product that uh, could get damaged you know, on the route or in the delivery process, um, there could also be 
you know, product that is flagged that the code date is, is too old or things like that, um, there becomes a lot of opportunity for uh, theft to creep into the process. This also creates a lack of accountability. Um, it's not necessarily an intended lack of accountability, but it gets difficult to hold drivers accountable for um, what's being turned in and the inventory that's on the truck and so on. So, and then again, if uh, you know everything is run off paper, a lot of times there may not be any sort of reporting or a specific settlement process um, that ensures that what the driver collected is what's being turned in. So obviously there are other challenges that can come into, day, uh, into play dealing with an end-of-day process that's all manual. So our last topic is around uh, what we would term a perfect delivery ratio. And really this comes into play if, you know, your perfect, del if your rate delivery ratio is about 95% accurate, meaning customers, you know, order certain things and that's exactly what they get every single time, then you know, moving to a electronic or automated process may not uh, have some of the value, but really if you're less than about a 95% delivery rate, perfect delivery ratio, um, then there can be a lot of value in implementing a system that can deal with a lot of the challenges that we've already talked about. So really where this comes into play, you know, again, this is kind of a summary of a lot of things that we've talked about. Extra back office labor costs, um, you know, when you have any sort of adjustments and you've got to record those and get that data into the system in an accurate way, a lot of times that can take a lot more time than um, an electronic or automated process would, would handle that. Um, a lot of times this will create more customer disputes to manage. You know, if about, you know, less than 80% of the uh, uh, deliveries are not, you know, clean, if you will, then you end up with a lot of potential for a customer to call up and say, hey, I didn't get this, or this was bad, or this was damaged. Um, and most of the time, because you got to take care of your customer, you kind of just deal with whatever it is that they're, they're feeding you. So um, there, there's always an opportunity for additional customer disputes to deal with. Um, and any time there are more customer disputes, the chance of a lower customer's overall satisfaction um, uh, is at risk as well. So, and then there's the concept of uh, increased delivery shrink, which really comes into play not just you know losing product um, you know out of the inventory necessarily, but dealing with damaged product, dealing with product that's being returned because it was oversold or over delivered to a store, um, as well as the opportunities around uh, theft, things like that. Um, again, with the paper-based process the ability to pick up on any sort of, uh, of those problems around shrink typically takes a fair amount of time, um, which then it's, it's more difficult to recover from. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Georgia to talk through some of the costs. Thank you, Daryl. So folks, when Daryl was going through his slides, like he called out in the bottom right corner were cost areas associated with the um, challenges that paper-based processes what we've done is we've created a, a annual impact and ROI case for moving away from paper-based delivery operations and practices to electronic. Uh, we've grouped the challenges that Daryl discussed into these five areas, driver paperwork, driver on-site delivery, paper-based supplies, and back back office data entry and dispatcher and warehousing. And we've generated the annual impact cost based off of a five, or excuse me, an eight truck route uh, uh, operation. Now you may have more trucks, you may have less trucks. So this information will change and vary depending on your delivery operations. But we believe that it is a, a good standard to use to um, calculate what your potential impact is. Now, if you were to switch over to an electronic proof of delivery solution, we've calculated that this is the type of savings that you'll see. Now, granted, you're probably looking at that going, well, wow, that, that's a significant decrease. That, that can't be accurate. How could that be? Well, you're correct. 
that is a 50% savings. But through our customers and through their evaluations, we have seen repeatedly that it is possible to achieve this 50% savings when you commit wholeheartedly to switching away from a paper-based process. You're eliminating the, the paper invoicing, you're reducing the um, driver and administrative back office labor through the different things that Daryl was talking about, and you're creating efficiency for the driver during their daily route. And, and that's not all. There are these five bonus efficiencies that Daryl will go over that happen along with the additional improvements that I, I outlined. Yeah, so let's talk about those real quick. Um, and there, there are more in, in addition to this, but these we figure are some of the um, more um, significant uh, efficiency increases that can apply. Um, first of these being inventory tracking. And really this applies to you know, knowing what's on a route at the start of the day, um, driver having visibility to that, and then as the day progresses and deliveries are made, uh, returns or credits are picked up, um, that inventory constantly being updated. Um, there's a lot of value in knowing what's on the truck really at any given point in time, um, which then also aids in uh, the end of day process where you can actually confirm what came back to the uh, warehouse. So next one is temperature tracking. Um, this is great for uh, refrigerated and frozen food service delivery. Uh, so obviously it applies to the dairy industry. Uh, but really the ability to capture temperatures off of your truck or trailer, um, different compartments of that, and attach those temps that are captured to the particular transaction uh, is really what we're talking about here. That can also include tracking temperatures at your customer um, facility as well. So their cooler, their refrigerator, things like that uh, where the product's being delivered. So next one is real-time performance visibility. Because an a, a electronic proof of delivery system uh, is running on a mobile computer and pretty much all of our mobile computers today are running on a cellular network uh, of some sort as well as Wi-Fi networks, the ability for the data that's captured in the delivery transaction to be immediately updated into a back office system so that uh, route managers, customer service, um, other folks at the back at the headquarters have the ability to see what's actually happening on the routes, measure the performance, um, and deal with customer issues with lot, you know, almost real-time data. Accurate and timely reporting, again, because that data is able to get into the back office systems so quickly, uh, the ability for people to run reports and you know, measure performance um, as well as other scenarios um, comes into play um, almost naturally. And then the last point here is around delivery asset tracking. And really what that means is being able to track those assets that are yours that are used for the delivery of your product to your customers. So that could be milk crates, uh, racks, pallets, uh, other carts, things like that, that uh, you, know, you use and a lot of times you leave at your customer. You may pick up stuff from the, the previous delivery. Uh, but over time, it's easy to lose track of these products. And of course, they, they aren't free. You don't charge your customer for them, but they certainly cost you. So this allows you to keep track of and manage the, the delivery and the return of those products. Thank you, Daryl. So obviously we're big proponents of moving away from paper-based invoicing. And the reason for that is that we have the solution called Mobile Conductor. And through the use of handheld mobile computing devices, like your smartphones, but heavier duty and, and, and built to withstand the environments that your drivers are in, Mobile Conductor improves delivery operations, creates efficiency with the driver in the truck and in the back office, as well as improving visibility into your operations in all the ways that Daryl discussed. Without sponsorship from Zebra today, this webinar would not have been possible, so we want to make sure to thank them. They are a tried and true partner that helps us advance the messaging of Mobile Conductor 
and also their technology is what enables Mobile Conductor to come alive. This particular device that we're calling out from Ziva is the TC55 Touch Computer. We've done a review of this computer and we gave it an A. You can see that on our blog and by downloading the handout, there's a direct link on this slide so that you can go read it. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. We appreciate that you took the time to uh, learn about our solution for moving away from paper-based delivery. If you have any questions, please follow up with our Director of Business Development, John McCabe. He is eager and, and ready to field any of your questions regarding the topics that we discussed today. Thank you for your time again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your week.